How's it going, bros? In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to stop browsing the web like you're some kind of normie, become proficient in some of the most obscure programs known to man. This is a browser based on Vim. They tend to want to do everything in Vim, standing for V Improved, the ever famous Unix text editor, entirely keyboard controlled. This is also almost entirely keyboard controlled. You may need to use this someday. Uh, if you, uh, I don't know, injured your hand or something and uh, you can only use uh, the one hand to browse the web. A very common problem for a lot of us uh, tech IT nerds. We may get uh, carpal tunnel syndrome in like one hand and we might have to use the other hand to browse the web and um, do research. You'll meet these people if you travel through the Unix world. They tend to want to do everything in Vim. First thing you're going to do is you're going to come over to this website we see right here. We're going to scroll down. We're going to copy this command in our favorite console editor. We're going to copy this. And then we're going to cd into the directory. If you just want the quick start setup, here's all you do. And you can run Vim browser without having to install it. So if you just want to try it out and decide whether this is the browser for you or not, there are two files in here that you can edit if you need to. The first one has to do with compiling. As we see here in this file, we can change the install directory if we need to. Uh, we can change some other stuff. Most people won't need to change anything here. The next has to do with customization. And we see here that I've made some changes, and these changes will override the default config. You can set your home page, you can set your font type, font size as well. I made mine a little bit bigger. Default font size is a little bit too small for my taste. And of course, you can change background color. But if you want to read the manual and how to use it, you're going to have to install it. So I recommend... And then hit enter. Next config we can change is in the home directory. Home directory dot config slash vimb slash config. We see we can set the home page. We can set the downloads path. There's actually a lot of different commands you can input in here and change in here. But if you want to know more about that, you're going to have to look at the manual. And you can scroll down here. And here are all the different key commands that you can use and all the options we can change. So let's go ahead and fire up the Vim browser and I'll show you how it works. I've set my default homepage to DuckDuckGo, but you can set your homepage to whatever you want. So when you open up the page and you wanna to go to the first open input box, simple, GI. There we go, selected the search box. Remember when I told you that this is a web browser for hackers and people who have to browse the web with one hand? Let's say that I want to scroll up and down. I can do that with the J and the K key. J and K. Or if I've scrolled to the bottom of the page and I want to go all the way back up, GG. If I need to scroll to the left or the right, I can use the H and L key, which in this case, we're already zoomed in. I can hit the plus key on the numpad, equal sign, takes me back to original zoom. Now, if I wanna click on a link, I hit F. Every clickable link on here has a number. What we have to do is enter in the number of the link we wanna click. Let's do number 29. Blue whales. Excellent. Let's say that I want to look at images. Well, normally if I were to just hit F, uh, as we see here, this uh, link here appears to not be clickable. If we do semicolon I, picture number two. I'm gonna hit the R key to reload. Semicolon I, two. 
There we go. Here we go. There's our image of a blue whale. We got it. Of course, you might be thinking to yourself, maybe you've made a terrible mistake. Maybe you clicked one too many links. Maybe you've gone to a part of the internet that you'd rather not have gone to. Don't worry, we can go back. We can go back the normie way. Control O. Or we can go forward. Control I. But wait a minute, I wanna go back. Three pages. Number three on the keyboard. Control O. We've gone back three pages. Ahead, three pages. Let's do it. Number three on the keyboard. Control I. Oops, I'm sorry. I was in input mode. We have to click out of this input mode. Number three. Control I. How about number two? Control O. See the power of this browser? All right. Now you might be wondering yourself, what good is a browser without some tabs? Can we open up new tabs? Well, technically no, but you can open up new windows. So if you type in new tab, oh, excuse me, tab open, and we can hit uh, tab on the keyboard to finish the command out for us. Hit enter. There we go, a new tab has been opened. We can search for something on here like, uh, oh, I don't know, Vim browser. There we go. Let's go back. GG. All right, I'm gonna hit F. This time, we're gonna hit number five to click on images. There we go. Now here's what we're gonna do. We wanna open up a new image. If I were to hit F, regular F, and pick any one of these, like 23, obviously, instead of taking me to the image, it's gonna take me to the page because who knows where the image on, that, on this page is. Control O, take us back. And now we're gonna hit semicolon and capital I. Beforehand, I did semicolon lowercase I, but what happens when I do capital I? I'll show you. Let's hit number six. So what just happened? I'll tell you what happened. New tab with our image. That's what happened. Open the image, new tab. We're done, get rid of it. Hit quit. We can search for text in large documents. Just hit the slash key. Search for Vienna. N for next. N again for next. Or maybe we want to search from the current place to the top of the document. Search in real time with question mark. So searching works the same in Vim browser as it does in Vim. As we see here, we've got control D, control U, control J, J, control K, control F, control B. If we want to search for a term, we've got slash Vienna. We can search down the document, N key to select the next selection. We can even do question mark to search back. N, 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 N. We see we scroll up the page. Slash Vienna. And now hit N, 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 and we're scrolling down the page again. We can hit the pound key to take us to the last instance of the word on the page, or the star key to take us to the first instance of the word on the page. We can hit the number four, followed by ZI, to take us four steps of zoom on the text, or we can hit four again with ZO to take us back out again. And of course, GF, or the current web inspector on the current page. There, see? Pretty neat deal, don't you think? And of course, colon, quit takes us out of the browser but wait a second i need an ad blocker don't worry i'll show you how 
All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open up a new web page. So how do you open up a web page? Simple. O. And we're gonna go to duck duck go dot com. Hit shift R. R. Hold on. GitHub W Y E. Okay. Number 16. This is an adblock plugin that is compatible with VimB. I'll show you how to install it. We're going to copy the git address. Go over to our console. CD. Right? Then CD into. Next step. I hit enter. What we want to do is link this adblock.so over to where VimB is going to look for the plugin. VimB looks for the plugin, I believe, under user slash local slash lib. I changed my installation path to be a little smaller. If you're not sure where VimB is going to look for the plugin, it's easy to find out. See right here, line 12, we have extensions dir, we have run prefix slash lib and vim, and of course run prefix is user. So in this case, this installation is going to look for plugins under the folder user slash lib slash vimb. Ooh, sudo, Ellen. And then you would hit enter. I've already linked it. So I don't need to do that again. With adblock installed, how do we add adblock filters to our lists? WYE adblock always looks for adblock lists in the same spot in the same text file. What we want to do is we're going to fetch some adblock lists and we're going to put them in a config file. So we're going to go to easylist.to. We're going to scroll down and we're going to come here and we're going to copy this link, copy link location. And then in our console, what we're going to do, we're going to type out C URL plus the URL itself, dash O for output. And we're going to list off this file right here, this file location. Excellent. Now we're going to do the same thing again. Using the next list. We're going to use all these lists. Now we're going to test to make sure WYE adblock can actually see the easy list. Simple command. And there we go. WYE adblock can see our easy list. So let's test out our ad blocker. Adblock tester. Looks like we got uh, 58 points out of 100. All right, hopefully you found that tutorial useful. You know how to browse the web now, just using your keyboard. Or uh, if you uh, need to browse the web with one hand, you know how to do that now too.